Hello everyone, welcome back to Honey Hill. My name is Samantha and this is Eve. This is my daughter Eve and we are going to be cleaning up the lower terrace in my back garden today. <coughs> we are going to be cleaning up the lower terrace in my back garden today. Eve has been ill lately, um, but she has finally turned a corner and some vitamin D and fresh air is just what the doctor ordered. So she's gonna be outside with me today. Um, it is about 12.30 and I have to leave in a couple hours to pick up my older children from school. So we're gonna see how much I can get done in this back space, how long it takes to weed the border to my right and see if I can get any of the perennials planted that I wanted to get planted today, including hellebores and some primrose and some other things. You ready to do that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. So these are the tools I'm gonna to be using today, my Falco number two pruners. I've already cut back some of the roses and hydrangeas in here, but if there's anything else I need to just kind of clean up, I'm gonna go ahead and use these. Uh, any perennials that, like the herbaceous perennials that need to be cut back to the ground that are left in here. And then my favorite weeding tool, this is not sponsored content, I just genuinely love these tools. This is the Cobra Weeder, and I wanna say that this is a local Washington State company. I could be totally wrong, um, but I will link this tool down below. But this has just been the best um, tool for me to get really stubborn weeds out of my dense soil. Um, and I actually lost mine and I couldn't find it and I just ordered another one off of Amazon and this came this morning. So perfect timing. Um, I will probably end up finding the other one sometime later in the season, but I needed to anyway so that when my kids come out and help me, my older kids, they have, they're always fighting over this one tool. Um, and then I'm gonna be using my uh, horseshoe uh, hoe and then, um, or my stirrup hoe my horseshoe hoe, the stirrup hoe. And then I'm gonna be using a shrub rake and my Fiskars green pop-up bag. Um, but that's it, let's get going. Found some bindweed in this flower border and it's 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 all around. But when you pull bindweed, everywhere you break off at the roots, it's going to sprout a new root. So you basically anger it. The best way to get rid of bindweed is either just to keep pulling it until you weaken it enough, but really smothering it out. So mulching really, really thickly to exclude all light so that these can't spread. But it, take a look at how long this root is. And I know that this wasn't the entire thing because these can spread just multiple feet. Um, the best time to pull bindweed is right after a rain when the, when the ground is softer so the roots are easier to pull out. Um, but bindweed's a really tricky weed for me. So we've got a lot of it, especially in the um, the newly created flower beds that were just at one point wild. Um, there had never been flower beds here before. So, yeah.
So it is now after five o'clock and it uh, took me about two hours to weed and clean up most of that flower bed. Now I've decided that it just would not be worth the physical effort out of my body. I'm trying to like work smarter, not harder uh, to weed the really dense mat of grassy weeds that are in there. That bed, if you've seen my previous videos, um, was made out of fill. So we had to bring in 150 tons of fill to be able to level off this lower terrace. And in all of that fill was just tons of weed seeds. So in the areas that I've densely planted, I've been able to uh, mitigate any kind of growth and, and, and mulched in the beginning. But that second half of that bed that I didn't initially plant in a lot of, and I didn't initially, I guess I did initially mulch it, but I didn't plant in uh, weed seeds had really um, flourished. So um, what I'm going to do is just lay down some of that, um, that landscape paper, or it's even just construction paper that's cheaper, or cardboard, whatever I can get a hold of and then do, do mulch. And if the road restrictions still haven't lifted, I'm just gonna go buy some bagged mulch to get these areas that really need to become no dig beds before the weeds just really explode. Today was almost, I think it was 70 degrees today. So we really went from really cold weather to really warm weather very quickly. And um, that'll probably slow down and, um, but, yeah, we, we're just in this new season. It just seems like overnight almost um, in this warm weather season. So what I'm gonna do now, now that I've got most of the cleanup done and I know what I'm gonna do moving forward, where I put in that back corner cardboard down, mulch over top of it, let that just sit and rest throughout most of the summer. And then I'll probably plant, um, my plan is to eventually pack out that whole area with ground cover that would choke out any weeds. So I will either plant those maybe in August or the beginning of September so that any perennials I plant there have time to root in. Um, or I'll wait until early next spring to plant, but I'm just gonna have to see how that, that goes. Um, and then um, knowing myself, if I find like a really great ground cover earlier, I could still plant it this spring and then just um, do the cardboard or paper and mulch around the planting. There's different ways you can do it. Um, there's, I, I don't feel like there's like a solid, like you have to do it this way. It's just sort of a matter of convenience and what, what works out best for in the moment. Um, but I wanted to show you just the few bits I wanna plant down in the border and add today. So I got this primula, this primrose, and it is supposed to be a Sunset Shades primrose. However, this looks just like cowslip to me, like just the classic yellow uh, English, what I think of as like an English cowslip. Um, and I've never seen these locally before, and there was just one at the nursery and um, that I that I saw and so I grabbed it and I love this so so much I'm gonna put it in the blue white and yellow border and see how it does down there um, now these are all the little facts about uh, primroses or primulas I love that they're deer resistant they are uh, pollinator attractors and they are perennial to zones four, so extremely winter hardy. Um, now, even though this isn't the exact variety on the tag, it was mislabeled. Uh, the the uh, growing zones and all those things are bound to be very, very similar, um, if not identical. So I've got one of these beautiful primulas. Again, that looks just like the, the cowslip. And then I've got another primula and this one is supposed to be a white Japanese primrose. If you can focus on that tag. And this one is hardy down to zone five, so a little less hardy. It grows 12 to 18 inches tall and 12 inches wide. And I picked out one of these two. Now the primroses like part shade, so I'm gonna kind of put them in the shadier areas of the bed 
um, in the corner to where they can grow in. So hopefully that one is not also mislabeled. And then I have three of these wedding party, wedding bells, hellebores. And this is a semi-fresh bloom. Now I had another one that was just loaded up with blossom when I bought it. And um, the blossoms were just these gorgeous big white hellebore um, flowers. So there's some stuff I need to uh, pinch out of here, but this is a beautiful variety of hellebore. Now I have three of these. So I'm gonna put those all in like a little trio. And then the other thing I'm gonna just add in are some of these minnow narcissus that I had picked up for pots but didn't get around to using. So I'm just gonna plant them now so that they can perennialize in the border and I will be able to enjoy them next spring. And minnow narcissus are these little uh, multi-flowers to a stem, really petite little blossom. You can kind of see the proportions here even though they're out of bloom. But lovely little white uh, collars and the little yellow trumpet so very very pretty and and then i have a, a couple of things i want to pot for some herbs i want to pot for the house and then some pansies i want to pot to put on our back our table on the back gravel patio which hopefully this spring or summer will become a beautiful paver stone patio because it just like is one of those things where I just cringe sharing it with you guys because it looks so bad it just looks like just awful it looks awful and unkept and undone but it's it, it, someday someday Look at these fritillaria, that checkerboard. They're just so pretty. They're one I wanna, these are a bulb that I wanna add a lot more of to the garden. Okay, so to wrap up this evening, I'm gonna be potting up some herbs and some pansies to add to my back patio table just for some seasonal interest, color, scent when we're sitting down and enjoying a meal out here, and herbs to pick for drinks and things like that. So, first of all, I'm gonna be potting up two pots of this lavender thyme, which smells so amazing. I can't even tell you. It really does have a lavender kind of scent. Yeah, it's beautiful. So I have two of these lavender thymes. Now, thymes love a lot of drainage. This one grows 10 inches high, 18 inches wide. It's hardy to zone five, so negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. They're drought tolerant and evergreen. So I have two, I have one for outside and then I have one for the house. So, whoop. I'm gonna be putting this one here. And I'm actually, because they're gonna be in these pots for a while, and there's already some food in this potting mix, but I'm gonna add some Biotone starter fertilizer 
just to get them going and just to have make sure I have some added goodness in this potting compost. Okay, so I don't make a huge mess. I'm gonna be potting this over the ground since I'm gonna have to clean off my table. Make sure I have a little bit of a lip to water. Okay. So next I'm going to be planting this Swiss Ricola mint, which, oh my goodness, this is such a good smelling mint. It's so floral almost. But it's just a really, like I could, sm I could just like rub that and smell that all day. Wow. Whew, it's strong. So when you plant mint, you wanna be sure to plant it in a container so that it stays in one place. Mint will spread prolifically and it will take over whatever you plant with it. So I like to plant the mint by itself in a container. This one grows two feet wide by two feet tall. So this is not gonna be able to stay in this container very long. I'm just gonna have it in here through the spring until I can put it in a bigger pot. But it is hardy down to zone three. Okay, so the next variety of mint I'm gonna be planting is lavender mint, which again, I'm really into these lavender scented herbs, but does smell like lavender. Wow. That is so different from the Swiss Ricola mint. So the lavender mint grows 18 to 24 inches tall and 24 to 36 is inches wide, and it is hardy down to zone five. Last but not least, I have these gorgeous frizzle sizzle yellow blue swirl pansies. And I'm just gonna be adding them to these pots to give me lots of spring color. Now I have three four packs, so I'm gonna put six of these little starts in each container. And here's the finished product. So I just love the natural, just wild look of the herbs and the frizzle sizzle pansies and these beautiful aged terracotta pots. I love just to be able to sit here and touch the herbs and you'll be able to smell them. The kids can pick some of the mint and put it in their drink. And it's just gonna give us some endless beauty as we enjoy our outside space. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Happy gardening.